So I believe today there is a word uh, that he wants me to share. Yeah. Found in this passage of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. It's on the screens. We'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And I do inquire of your prayers as we are ready to read. Are you there? Say amen. amen. The word of the Lord reads as follows. For everything there is a season. A time for every activity under heaven. Yeah. Two says a time to be born. Mm. And a time to die. What? A time to plant. Yeah. And a time to harvest. A time to kill. And a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. And right on cue, a time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. We're almost there. Verse 9 says, what do people really get for all their hard work? I have seen the burden God has placed on us all. Here's where we'll stop, verse 11. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of of the Lord. What Solomon suggests to us in his wisdom is that God is never caught by surprise. Matter of fact, there is a time for everything that we see before. As a matter of fact, if you look uh, deeper in the text, you'll understand that what he's talking about is understanding that we all, no matter who we are, no matter how long we've been in the church, no matter how much money we have in the bank, no matter where we come from, we all are going to have to go through these transitions of time. So if it's your time to laugh right now, enjoy. But if it's your time to cry, cry through it. Because the text suggests to us that life, as it always has, and it always will, change. For somebody who's in a good place, that's good news. But for someone who's in a bad pocket, it may be even better. Because the message is seasons and time changes. What I'm trying to say as I start out is that we, we can't get too overwhelmed by where we are right now. In other words, we can't get so excited about how good it is right now to where we don't continue to stay in a place of pursuit of God to pray and keep ourselves in a position to where God can keep taking us from faith to faith and glory to glory because the season just might change. And on the other end, we, we can't let the lows of life hit us so hard that we just throw up our hands and quit and want to get out the game because if you stick around and stay around, things are going to change. Amen. But the key for the believer is being in a place of balance in life, maturity in life. The Bible talks about it being sober in life so that, as Paul says, no matter what state I have found myself in, My God. I've become content. Because in as much as the seasons change and people change, God stays constant. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. 
So what I want to talk to you today about for a few moments, I want to talk about what Solomon alludes to, and he alludes, he alludes to rather, this whole cycle adjustment. Or in other words, when seasons begin to change. How many of you know that seasons can change just like that? That's why no matter where you are, again, the message behind the message is stick around. Amen. Amen. Now, we generally use this text when it comes to a time of funeral. But I want you to understand it is not just a time of recognizing that there is an appointed time for man to live and to die. But there is also a whole lot of shifts and changes that happen when you understand the season. Somebody help me out on my volume in the back. So when we look at the seasons, it's important to understand that although we don't know always when the season is going to change, we can start to find clues for the change. In other words, what I'm trying to share with you is that we have to learn to sense when my season is changing. That's my subject for today. Sensing when my season is changing. Sensing when my season is changing. I, I want to share with someone today that your season is about to change. Yes. Amen. The good news is God knows where you are on that cycle of change. And in respect to understanding, knowing that God knows, Oft times, God will begin to give us clues and signs so that we are also in tune and in touch with the seasons that come and change in our lives. Can somebody say amen? amen? So he concludes in verse 11 by saying, Yet God has made everything beautiful for, his, for its rather own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. How many of you know God will give you an inkling of what your destiny is supposed to be, but he doesn't always give us every little step along the way in the plan of perspective. It's kind of like Paul says it in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that God has given us things that I have not seen and ears have not heard neither has it entered to the heart the things that God has prepared for him but God has revealed it unto us by his spirit so what God does is that he gives you an inclination of something coming like a, a movie preview of a coming attraction and some of you have been able to sense in your spirit that greater is on the way some of you have been able to sense in your spirit that it's been a long time coming but a change is about to come. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. What I want to talk to you for a few moments today about is understanding that God, although he doesn't give you every piece of the process, he gives you oftentimes the big picture. But what we begin to do as we walk with God, we begin to sense when the seasons start to change. So I want to talk just for a few moments uh, and share with you three signs that you can tell when the season's about to shift. But before I do, I want to remind you or share with you, some of you may know that there is a reason that seasons change. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. And some of you scientists know that the reason that the seasons change is because the earth itself is rotating. And it's rotating where? Around the sun. And so depending upon which hemisphere you're in, the northern or the southern, and how close you are at the specific time to either the north or the south pole, it will dictate what season you and I are in, in the natural. In the natural, that is the case. But in the spiritual, I want you to know that just like it is in the natural, we began to dictate how hot or cold our lives are and which season we're in by how closely we are aligned to revolving around, not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. Yeah. The sun. Yeah. 
And so we begin to learn things about seasons shaped to how we walk and shaped by how close we are to the sun. Uh, not Solomon, but the, the, the uh, psalmist says it like this in Psalms number one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Verse 3 says, and on his law doth he meditate day and night. 2 going into 3. 3 says, and he shall be, you said it earlier, like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that shall yield, get this, his fruit but when? In his season. In his season, because he's revolving around the sun, his leaves shall not wither. Yes. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. What I want to let you know is that there are some things you're going to get done, not just because the date has changed on the calendar, but because it's your season in the spirit. I came to tell you that you've been sensing and believing that God's getting ready to change some things, and you're right, because God has dropped some signs in your spirit to cause you to keep going when you want to give up. He's dropped some signs in your spirit that this is not the season to throw in the tile, but it is the season to recommit, to recalibrate, and to challenge yourself to see God do what he said like he did in Philippians 1 and 6. And he who began a good work is faithful to perform it. Until the day of Christ Jesus. Help me preach and just tell yourself, my season is changing. My season is changing. You got to believe that. You got to know that. Because even if you're in a good season, guess what? It can get better. And it's imperative to understand what season that you and I are walking in. Because it, 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 it really is impacted by not only what we hear, but by what we say as well to ourselves and what we allow to come into our ear gates. I like what Solomon says as well. The proverb writer in chapter 15, verse 23, he further clarifies and says that it is a good word that is spoken, but not just spoken, but spoken in due season. It gives amazing results. I'm paraphrasing the last point. But what I'm trying to tell you and I is that there are certain things, even as we hear, that will not produce the fruit that it should until we're in the right season. And for some of us, we've gone through a season of testing. But it's only because God is getting ready to take us to a season of blessing. That's what Paul said in the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, when he begins to challenge us to not be weary in well-doing. Yeah. Even though you've had to work hard, even though you've pumped and you've primed the pump, and you have not seen what you sensed in your spirit, yeah. stick around and stick to it because the season will change. There's a principle at work. Notice what he says there in the text 6 and 9 of Galatians. He says, let us not be weary in well-doing because in due, here's the word again, season. We will reap a harvest if we don't faint. If you keep on walking after God during your dry season, you're qualifying yourself to walk to God and walk with God in a blessed and bountiful season. I don't know who I'm came, coming to talk to today, but I need someone to know that you've been waiting, you've been praying, and you've been crying, but guess what? It's been just for a season. And if you stay with God, he'll shift the season. He'll shift the time in your and my favor. Seasons show up throughout the word of God, even as it relates to things like us getting a blessing and or healing. One of the texts that I, I love when I start thinking about seasons is, is John chapter 5, where you hear a story of a lame man who was by the pool of Bethesda. And the reason he was by the pool was because he knew that during the certain season, the water would be troubling. Whoever would get in the pool would get healed. But he had something that was a problem because he would make an excuse. 
he would say, I miss the season because every time the pool got troubled, the water got troubled, rather, I would try to get in, but somebody would beat me. And so I start asking God, God, what can I learn from that? He says, you got to learn that you got to stay in the place yes. when the seasons change. So even if you don't have anybody to help you, just get close to where God has shown up. He'll come again. Yes, God. yes, yes. So there's even some of you that may study things like phonology, where you can study and learn the seasons. Here's what I want you to know real quick. I want you to know that the more you study the seasons, the more you can sense the seasons. And so let's jump into it. As we jump into it, I want to share just quickly three signs a season is about to shift. The first sign that a season is about to shift it's not rocket science. It's very uh, clear. But we can tell that a season is about to shift when the calendar or the time changes. When the calendar or the time changes, you can sense that a season is about to shift. Uh, when there are certain dates that come, you can almost guess what the weather's going to look like because the calendar date, the chronos of time, dictates what is going to happen when and where. That's why some of you, uh, you know, you go to uh, the Bahamas in their season during our winter months because they don't have the, the same type of hot weather that we do. What I'm saying to you is that when the calendar changes or time elapses, then that is a sign that the season is about to change. Now, uh, as I shared with you, when we talk about it from a natural perspective, we can also talk about it from a spiritual perspective. And here's what I want you to know, that your season will change even in the spirit with God. So what are you trying to say? There are certain things that should happen based on the season that you and I are in. In other words, none of us have a problem seeing the little babies walking around with diapers and drinking milk out of a bottle because that is the season that you're supposed to be in from zero to about a year. But all of us would think something would be wrong if Brother Smith walked in here in a diaper and a bottle at 38. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. What I'm saying is there are certain things that should happen based on calendar and time. And here's the, the challenge that we've had throughout the church, the modern day church, is that many of us keep rolling over time and dates that we've been in, but we have not seen the change and moving into a new season because we have not revolved around the sun. Yeah. But, but here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that the calendar or the time change can share with us that our season's about to change. There are some spiritual shifts that happen with time. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let me see if I can clarify it a little bit. So how many of you, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you have said yes to Jesus and you remember when you said yes to Jesus to give him your life, you became a Christian. And when you were a Christian for the first time, you were on fire, you had fervor, you were praying, and it looked like when you were on fire and fervor and you were praying to God in your first year as a Christian, your first month, you would pray in that season. And it would seem like God would just answer every prayer that you prayed. Seem like now that I'm walking with God, I'm in this season where I, you know, you can't touch this hammer. I, I'm so blessed to be stressed. I don't have to deal with any of this because I finally come to the place. Now, now fast forward to a few months, another year or so on the calendar. And how many of you, if you were honest with yourself and me, know that seem like sometimes the longer you walk with God, sometimes the longer he answers, he takes to answer the prayer now you've been with him a while and so now you're not he doesn't just move you by your emotions by doing things quickly he takes time so that you can mature in this new season Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody because now here's where faith meets the rubber and the road. Yeah. Can you wait on God in a season when it looks like he's doing nothing, but you believed him to do everything based on his word? Oh, yeah. 
The, the key is to remain patient with God, knowing that God knows when to unlock the door to your season. Even though it's a calendar date and time, we can sense when some things are going to change. But I want you to understand, there ought to be certain signs that we sense as we walk with God. Here's what I'm trying to say. We ought to be in a position to where we're growing closer to God day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, decade by decade. And if we're not careful, we will let the ebbs and flows of seasons stifle our growth. And before long, we'll look up and we'll just be a church member and not madly in love with Jesus. Don't let us hit a pocket or a season where it's a time to cry. We start asking questions like this. God, why would you let this happen to me? Isn't it funny how we often don't ask God those kind of questions when blessings come our way? When it's a time to laugh, we don't ask God, God, why did you let me laugh? Why did you let me have the promotion? But when the season of trouble comes, we oftentimes start questioning God. Number one, the, the sign, the first sign, the calendar or the time changes. So when we start seeing the time roll, it's a good sign that God's going to do something in time. But we can't get beside ourselves just because there is such a thing as time. And what I'm trying to say to you is that maturity in God on the spiritual side is not just dictated by longevity. It's dictated by how pure and sincere our pursuit and our heart is for God. It's what we do in the time, no matter what's on the calendar. Come on, talk to me, somebody. So what I'm trying to get you to see is that in as much as there is a calendar and a date time, you and I can start sensing time because God, he will begin to reveal certain things in our spirit. How many of you can sense when a season's about to change? It goes like this. You can sense that I've been here long enough. You can sense that the time has been moving and I know God is faithful and I know God can move and I know God's got all power. I can sense that there is something about to shift and lead me into a new season. But the good news is it's just not limited to time. It's not just limited to calendar. What I'm saying by this is that God doesn't just look at the calendar and see how long you've been in the church to equate your blessings. He looks and sees how faithful we've been in revolving around his son to dictate and to shift us into our season. So he doesn't just deal with the, the, the kairos, uh, the time, but he begins to let us know that there is a spiritual time yeah. that we can begin to unlock the new seasons in our lives. Good. The text says that there is a time to cry. There is a time to to be born. There is a time to die. There is a time to laugh. What he's saying is that there is a time for everything that you're going to experience in life. But don't let what happens in time cause you to change your mind about the constant God who's in charge of and who created time. The second sign I want to talk to you about for a little bit as it relates to how we can see signs that a season is about to shift. Number one, the calendar or the time changes. We even have manipulated a little bit with what we call daylight savings time. Uh, but number two, uh, you can see a sign that change is coming in the season by the climate or the temperature change. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You can tell that when it starts to get a little warm and the temperature starts to change, it must be summer season. How many of y'all from Texas originally? You, you can tell as soon as we start hitting those high numbers that the season should be changing. And what I want you to see is that you can tell when things start to get hot or cold that a season's about to change. Now, I'm talking in the natural, but I'm also talking in the spirit. And what I want you to understand is that oftentimes God will give you a sign that a season's about to change by the temperature or the climate that you you're in. How many of you have that, uh, you know, Spidey calls it his Spidey senses. We in the church call it our Holy Spirit insight. We can tell when the temperature changes that there is something coming with the season. L let me see if I can clarify. You don't always have to know 
because you're not a mind reader what people think. But most of the time, if not all the time, if you're observant, you can always tell when the season's about to shift because the temperature starts to change. The folk who you used to have favor with, all of a sudden, now they falling out with you. I'm trying to tell you, that's a good sign to start looking for a season of change. All of a sudden, things are going well and, and you're excited about what's happening in your company. You're excited about what's happening in your family. You're excited about what God is doing in your spirit, man, in your growth. But then all of a sudden, the temperature changes. You start walking with God a little while and things start happening on the periphery of your life. And all of a sudden now, things started to shift in the temperature. You're not as hot as you used to be. And I'm not going to put anybody on blast, but... but you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about not being as hot. Somewhere, whether you or I knew it or not, the temperature started to change and that was a sign that there was coming a shift in our season. Used to be, could nobody beat you praying? Used to be, you were the first one at church. Now, God and you are lucky if you even show up at all because the temperature has changed. Well, y'all looking at me like you don't, you don't get that. Uh, let me see if I can clarify it even further. Uh, even in relationships, people don't always have to tell you it's over, fellas. You know that one sister that you were dating? <laughs> the temperature changed <laughs> You couldn't turn I'm going to date myself But before you had all these cell phones Y'all had pages Your pager was beep beep blowing up And all of a sudden no number in there <laughs> Temperatures change And so without an email or text You can tell that the temperature or the climate in a relationship has changed. It's, it's a sign that a shift is starting to come. Don't mean you can't fix it. It's just a sign. See, many times we, we say we get surprised and oftentimes we get these signs that there's coming a shift. Are, are you hearing me? What I'm saying is when we walk with God, the Bible says like this in Psalms, the secret of the Lord yes. is with them that fear him. And when we respect and reverentially fear God yes. and walk with God and revolve ourselves around him, he begins to give us spiritual insight to help us prepare for the next season. That's all I'm trying to get you to see is that it will change. Yes. But because your season changes, don't you change your walk, your attitude, your mindset about who your God is because the time is coming. Yeah. Number two, you can tell that there is a sign of a seasonal change when the climate or the temperature begins to change. And so as we look at change, understand that God is in control of it all. Yeah. But he gives us these little clues to help us understand, to prepare ourselves. I, I wish I could tell you that even as a pastor, that I've always had this relationship with God, that every day, every moment, he just downloads to me 24-7 and tells me every little detail about life. Don't park there, because somebody's going to run into your car, but park over there. Yeah, yeah. Now, what I'm not saying is that God don't speak to us. That's not what I'm saying. Because even in those kind of situations, God has spoken to me. But what I'm about to share with you is simply this. There are some distinct times, even in my walk with God, that I know, and as much as I don't say every 24 uh, hours of every day, God is downloading and I'm hearing exactly what he said. There have been some life-defining moments where in certain seasons of my life, I knew without a shadow of a doubt, God spoke to me. Never shall forget, I'm driving down Keish Boulevard in my sister's red Toyota Tercel. They don't make them anymore. And I hear as I'm blasting my music, praising God, having a good time in a season of laughter. I hear God speak to me like he had never spoken to me before. And he got my attention, but this was a different type of attention getter. 
Because most of the time when we start talking about how God speaks to us, we start talking about how God told me I was going to get blessed and God told me it was going to be my season and God told me I was getting ready to walk in favor and God told me this and he told me that. Well, on this occasion, God told me, brace yourself. I said, what, what you talking about, God? He said, brace yourself because I'm getting ready to take you to a season that I'm going to break you. And I said, God, what are you talking about? I felt like you've already broken me. You want to know what he said to me? He says, James, I have not broken you. I just cracked you. But he says, if you hold on from this breaking, I'm going to build you like you've never been built before because you will know no matter what season you're in I'm going to be with you and I've got a plan still for your life what I'm trying to say with that is that in that moment it helped me to brace myself not walk in fear to brace myself not doubt God to brace myself but to be mindful that God said not that you're getting ready to get blessed but before you get blessed you're going to be broken and it's going to lead to your building what I'm saying is that when it showed up I reminded myself of the little drive on keys and knowing that God oftentimes will send the temperature to change and Lord did the temperature change I don't have time I can't tell you everything but Lord when the temperature started to change I reminded myself that as you go through the ups and the downs it does not mean that God has left you and I it means that we got to hold on tighter to him whether we're going up or whether we're going down somebody ought to give him some praise right there so we can sense when the season is changing because the climate or the temperature begins to change and then the third one I want to share with you as we look at these different times of seasonal change that we can see signs it's related to the time and the calendar it's related to uh, the temperature and the climate but it's different from the standpoint of uh, the Lord said in his word that God has made everything beautiful in its time and so the word I have for some of you before I go to my third point is simply this. It's just a matter of time. Don't throw away a season that you've built, that you've sown. Don't throw away the effort that you've given, the faith that you've had for one time or season of struggle because God is not quick to forget our labor of love. So here's what I need you to see. Number three, the culture or setting changes will give you and I a sign that the season's about to change. Yeah. How many of you have ever noticed, even before we even look at the calendar, you can sense something in the air long about October going into November. Mm. You can sense, and by the time you get to December, you can sense that there is something in the air uh, because the seasons change. We, we know we've got the calendar. We know the temperature starting, but the culture, uh, they even wrote a song, wouldn't it be nice if it were Christmas all year long? Well, behind that is not just the calendar date. Behind that is not just the giving of the presents to one another. Behind that is the spirit tied to that season. Because in that season, uh, even nasty folk act nice a little bit. Yeah. And you can just sense the culture change based upon the season. Are you with me? Amen. And so what I want you to understand is that in the culture that you're in is generally a sign that there's coming a shift of the season. I, I want to help somebody right here. So just like I was sharing earlier about the temperature tied to the temperature is the climate that God gives you and I clues so don't wait until they call you in the office and hand you a pink slip Come on. you ought to be able in certain respects to sense something going around and differently in the climate Come on. 
Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? When the climate starts to change, everybody used to be happy around here. Now, looks like everybody got it. You, you, can, you can probably sense that there's coming a shift in the seas. And so what God does is that he doesn't leave us outside blind. And even though we've got to go through ups and downs, and even though we've got to go through changes, what I'm asking you and I to do is to look at things differently and start to sense when you start to see the climate change. The climate and the culture mean a whole lot. There are even changes that take place that God will give you and I clues that something is about to change. And you don't want to ignore those. You want to prepare for those changes. Are you hearing me? Things start to look different when the culture begins to change. And here's what I want you to know, even speaking to culture, why it's so imperative that we know who we are and whose we are. Because God, if we're believers and we're saved, God has placed us in positions on our job. God has placed us on positions or in positions in our families. He's placed us in positions in our community. He's placed us in positions even in our church to not just deal with the culture, but to affect and to change the culture. That's why it's important to know that when we are his, we walk in a different manner. It doesn't matter what's happening in the culture. We are children of the Most High God. Yes. And we've been built to not just be affected by the culture, but to change the culture. And, and our spirit begins to affect what's happening in us. So that as things start to affect what's in us, it then has a direct correlation to what happens around us. You didn't know you had that much power, did you? You didn't know you had the power to declare your season. That's why I choose joy. That's why I choose peace. That's why I choose to get up every day believing that this will be the best day of my life. I may have to cry, but I still choose to believe that this will be the best day of my life. I may have to go through some borrowing, but I believe this still we still will be the best day of my life my life. I may have to go through some downs before I get back up but I still believe that God is still in charge and since he's in charge I'm going to stick with him till he changes my season. Yeah. Help me preach one more time. Tell yourself it's almost here. Almost here. See I don't know if, if all of you get this but the good news I have is that it's been working for you not against you. The good news I have is that the season is almost here. The good news I have is that even if you've been crying, you know where I'm about to go. 30 and 5 of Psalms says, weeping endures for a night, but joy will come. In the morning. Yeah. The next season's coming. My season is about to change. Notice what God said in the word. Verse 11, he says, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. I want to help somebody before I close. I want to help somebody who's been frustrated based on the season that you're in. Does not mean that you're not going to come out of it. Does not mean that God still does not have a plan for your life. What it does mean is that there is a time for, as Solomon says, everything, verse 1, under the sun. So I want to help a mother who has a young child. Doesn't mean God's not going to give you the business. It just may mean that you got to help them kids get to the next level in this season. I, I want to help someone who's having a financial challenge right now. Doesn't mean that you're not going to be the entrepreneur and, and God's not going to use you to open the door. It just means you may be in a season of learning instead of a season of living at the level that you believe God for. Yeah. All I'm trying to say is that many of us forfeit our true seasons because of setbacks in a little time. But seasons are made of nothing but compounded time that equates to a cycle. Yeah. And that's why I say, if you're having a good one, enjoy it. Because life's going to hit us all. We're going to have to deal with loved ones being uh, taken from this side of life. We're going to have to deal with challenges 
in the flesh and with people. But if you're enjoying it right now, enjoy it because the other time's coming. And if you're in that other time, don't quit. Just stay on with God because sooner or later the cycle's going to hit and you're going to have a chance to smile again. Amen. But don't get too happy because the season's going to change again. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you as succinctly as I can is that as you go through the seasons, don't let the seasons change you. You stay with God and change how you respond to the season. Because when the winter comes, you don't stop living. You put on a coat. Amen. That's all I'm trying to say. It's coming. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's just the season. Newsflash, you ain't the only one that's gone through this season. I didn't know it was going to be this hard. You ready to quit and you've been married three months. It's just, we all had to get that badge. It's a season. Oh, Lord. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this season. I'm picking up. I ain't no Uber driver. All I do is pick up kids, take them to school, take them to soccer, take them to try gymnastics. And I'm tired. Oh, it's just a season. I know you don't believe me, but for long, life is funny like that. Parents who were feeding me, picking me up. Now I got to pick up. Now I got to cut their food up. Oh, it's just a season. It's just a season. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And what the enemy wants you and I to do is to forfeit the best season because of this season. But you can't forfeit the best season for this season because all I'm trying to tell you is that there is a next season. There's a next season I'm believing God for and I want you to believe that the best is not behind but the best is next. And if God is faithful and he is he will remember every time you kept going in that season of struggle when you wanted to quit. If he is faithful and he is. 1 Corinthians 10 9 says he's faithful. He won't put no more on you than we can bear. I'm paraphrasing but he says with every test trial temptation he will open up a way of escape that we can stand up under. It's just a season. I can't tell somebody it ain't the time to quit the job yet. It's just a season. What you don't know is that the king's hand is in God's heart. Our king's heart is in God's hand. And what you're thinking about doing as walking out on the 13th, you don't know that on the 16th, your manager's going to lose his. It's just a season. It may be frustrating right now, but what you're frustrated by is going to build you to handle your next season. Help me preach one last time. I almost finished. I promise. Give me three minutes. Help me preach and just tell your neighbor, I'm built for this season. Yeah! I'm built for this season. It's been raining, but I'm built for this season. I've had to go through a storm, but I'm built for this season. I've been sick and didn't know how I was going to get well. But God told pastor to tell me I'm built for this season. I've been misunderstood. I've been confused and things hadn't worked the way I thought they would in this season. But I didn't know it till I came this morning. I'm built for this season. Come on, preacher. Hey, preacher. It's good. I'm going to let that marinate and let you know you got what it takes. The season will change. Yeah. But don't you change the character of who you are. Yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. You know why there's so Jesus. many people who are bitter and broken today? Because they didn't make it out of the season. Wow. They let wow. the season change them. Why all the time bad things keep having to happening to good people? Since it ain't gonna ever work in my favor, then I'm gonna be nasty like them. Now you stuck mm -hmm. in a cycle. Mm. Can't nobody love you because you don't love yourself because you stuck in a. Come on, wow. free job. Yeah. Free job. Come on. Oh, but if I had a different season, you don't get a different season until you go through this season. You don't get your $200 until you pass go. Some of y'all grew up playing Monopoly. You got to just, come on, come on. Stick to the script. Because God has a plan for your life. Stand to your feet. I just want to talk today. I shared with you that we can sense when my season's changing.
We can speak it. But sometimes when you speak it and you don't see it right away, it frustrates you. But that's a sign that your season's about to change. Because sometimes it is not good stuff. Sometimes it is your frustration that is an inclination that your season's about to change. Because it's your frustration that causes you to get up and do something about your destiny. Oh, come on, destination. I, I'm just trying to tell you this, and I, I'm going to leave you alone for real. Uh, it simply is my final thought. Sensing the seasons helps me seize the seasons. Sensing the seasons helps me to seize the seasons. So when I start sensing that winter time's coming, I got to prepare myself for winter time. You ladies know what it's like. I'm going to give you a last illustration. And I know I'm telling the truth. I got a wife, six sisters, and a daughter. And I learned from them. So you know what they do? They don't wait on the season to come. They sense the season so they can seize the season. So when I see first lady come in with all them bags, and it's July, but it looks like fur, I get a off-season discount. I tried it myself. I can't wait till winter come. I got some golf winter stuff. 80% off. Because I was expecting a season. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I know that's a little illustration, but, but when you prepare for the season, you will not be denied the season. So all I'm trying to tell you is that no matter what season you're in, don't let go to God's hand. And sensing the season will help you seize the season. Amen. You look forward to the next season because you know God's going to carry you through this one like he carried you through the last one. You'll start seizing the season because you sense that get this, God can bless me. He don't have to wait till summer. He can bless me in the winter. He can bless me in the fall. He can bless me in any and every season. I just got to make up my mind that I'm going to trust God and believe that I have a season. Yeah. Bow your head with me. I want to challenge you today. If you're here and you have been in a season that you wouldn't have scheduled for yourself, it's a time to cry. It's a time to pluck. It looks like it's been a time where things have been torn down. I want to challenge you to trust in God like you've never trusted him before. Seasons change, but God is a constant God. <clears throat> and he wanted us to know today that with him we can handle any season. But the key is being with him. And so I want to ask you today as you're pondering the question I'm about to pose. If you know that you have never totally surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus, I'm going to ask you as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed to take a, a bold step of faith. To take Jesus at his word. The word that tells us that if we, Romans 10 and 9, would confess with our mouth and really believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we would be saved. If that's you and you want a relationship with God I'm going to ask you to come I'm asking you to come because I'm not promising you I just told you what the word said the word says that there is a time for everything under the sun the good the bad the ugly but what I will promise you is that with every step in the valley he'll be with you even when he promotes you to the mountaintop He'll be with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But the key for the believer is not to walk away from him. Ponder that. Number two, if you're here and you are a believer, 
but you're dealing with the season of strain, the season of stress. You're in the season of the valley. Bad diagnosis. Family challenges. Falling in love. Work issues. Whatever the case might be. It's a hard season. But you want prayer. Believing that God can give life. Not just in the spring season, but he can step into the winter. He can step into the fall while things are falling around you. And lift you up. Will you come and let us pray with you? You're coming for salvation. You're coming for prayer for this season that you're in. Maybe you're here and you're the person I came to talk to today. In his arms. You know that God's going to work on your behalf. You know what it's like to deal with little and lack. You know what it's like to be in the valley. But you believe God is getting ready to move you into a season of abundance. And, and truth of the matter, we don't pray about this a lot. Because we often think that God is just for the down and out. But he's for the up and in. You want to know how to walk in this next season of blessing that God has taken you into. You want to know how to manage and how to walk wisely in the new season of influence that God's going to give you. The season of abundance that God is going to give you. When you come, let us pray with you. Falling in love. 